Hey, well, what's up, everyone? Welcome back to The Collision. Daniel here to talk about the new Mad Max movie, Furiosa. I've seen it, so let's talk about it. So Furiosa, this is the fifth entry in George Miller's uh, quite influential Mad Max saga, which began all the way back in 1979. And it is like a direct prequel to the last film, uh, the very critically acclaimed 2015 film, Mad Max Fury Road. And I'll admit that I'm not a huge, like, I don't have a long history with this franchise, although I'm obviously familiar uh, with it, but I am uh, a fan of this genre. I've always found sort of these like post-apocalyptic dystopian uh, type stories are interesting because they can kind of strip away some of the, you know, the masks of like civilization and just sort of explore and expose some of the rot and, you know, like this human like sinful nature beneath. Because this is a, an interesting film. This is one that I think is uh, at times like a difficult film or a tricky one to review and uh, a movie that I do have somewhat like conflicting uh, you know, opinions and emotions on. Although I think overall I did appreciate a lot of what is going on in this movie because uh, this is, it's unrelentingly grim and just really saturated with a lot of like nihilistic violence, which does make it, you know, a, a difficult film. Uh, but like I said, this is also a super engaging kind of work of visual storytelling that is bolstered by very impressive, like, technical filmmaking and kind of exhilarating action and probably most surprising to me is some very like sweeping biblical themes and the story is set like kind of several decades after a very you know apocalyptic global event and like, now you know the world is this kind of wasteland that is ruled over by these ruthless uh, warlords and gangs and Furiosa who begins this movie as a young child uh, kind of living in this like oasis um, kind of hidden settlement she's kidnapped and kind of taken away from her home and you know the rest of this movie is just her journey to try and find her way back without losing her life and I think even more at a deeper level like losing her soul and kind of paradoxically Furiosa is both like incredibly simple and also surprisingly vast, like even biblical in its scope. Because kind of on the surface, it is a somewhat narrow revenge story that that does unfold through kind of like a series, a parade of these, you know, high spectacle action scenes. But on a deeper level, I also think that this is kind of an intriguing exploration into sin and human nature, kind of in like a post-Eden world. And let's start with the visuals because that is the greatest strength of this movie, although not in the same way that something like James Cameron's Avatar movies, which really told like a very classical narrative story just against the backdrop of, you know, stunningly beautiful visuals. Um, Furiosa, it's, you know, it's, the visuals themselves are impressive as well, uh, but a lot of the storytelling in this movie is communicated itself through the visuals rather than any kind of like dialogue. Because Furiosa, who is played like in her later years in this movie by actress Anya Taylor-Joy, who I think is great in this movie, uh, but she has roughly like 30 lines of dialogue in the entire movie. Um, and there is like other characters are a bit more verbose, um, particularly the uh, Chris Hemsworth, who's sort of like surprising, kind of unusual role as the villain in this movie. And I think he's great. I think he effectively kind of balances some of like the campy silliness while also being like, you know, effectively unhinged and menacing. But with very kind of limited dialogue all throughout, it is largely through the visuals that the characters and like the immersive world building is established and explored. And that is most apparent in the frequent sort of high adrenaline action set pieces, which are just impressive displays of like technical filmmaking. Just these like car convoys are, you know, flying through this wasteland desert and assaulted by these swarms of like, you know, biker gangs, really like the cinematography, the sound design, the musical score, and this, the more like tactile, like physical effects all come together, like at a level of like proficiency that just isn't often found in Hollywood, at least not today in the, you know, the age of very heavy CGI and, you know, digital effects. And just like on a purely technical level, there is just a ton to marvel at in this movie. But as impressive as those scenes are, like the way that they're composed, there's also a degree of just sort of meaninglessness to the action. It's always like stunning spectacle, but at times, at least to me, it can also feel somewhat like empty spectacle as like, you know, another scene of this cars and bikes in the desert and there's gunfire and explosion and this scores of sort of nameless characters are dying, you know, on behalf of their very unsympathetic and, un, you know, evil warlords. I think as the audience, you can begin to sort of wonder, like, is there a point to all this? I think the answer to that question will likely depend like 
on each viewer. I think for some, uh, the answer will just be a clear no, uh, while others, I think just like the simple entertainment value of the thrilling spectacle will itself be a, enough justification for uh, the film. But I think like a third perspective, this is more where I land with this film, is almost like Furiosa is arguably more effective like thematically than it is narratively. Because the wasteland in this movie is like intentionally grim and like this you know, nightmarish world that is filled with senseless death and sort of these frugal, carnal uh, desires. And in some ways, this kind of the tone and the approach to this movie reminds me of like a movie such as like The Godfather or maybe more recently like the John Wick uh, movies where a lot of like the the narrative tension in this does come from kind of contrasting the, the protagonist the you know the main character the hero against sort of this meaningless very violent harsh world to where I think the meaning of the action doesn't necessarily derive and becoming overly invested in any of these you know various competing you know evil gangs and warlords and factions but instead it's more kind of following Furiosa's own personal journey and kind of her more hopeful worldview in contrast to kind of the more hopeless world that kind of fuels these conflicts in the first place. As far as content to consider, things going on on the surface of this, this is clearly an R-rated film, although there's perhaps less like problematic content than might be expected uh, based on the rating. And that's perhaps most true when it comes to like, language, because there's a surprisingly limited amount of profanity. I counted maybe, you know, two to three minor profanities, and then there is sort of a, you know, a, a handful of other just sort of crude words. Uh, violence, this is where the rating uh, comes from, because this is a violent movie. There's plenty of death. There's plenty of carnage. Countless characters get shot and stabbed and crushed under wheels and uh, killed in explosions. And there are like splatters of, you know, blood. Although this isn't a movie that's just filled with like a profusion of, you know, gore. Just like really over the top stylized or graphic violence in that way. Kind of outside of like the action itself, there are some other just sort of, you know, violent or graphic visuals, uh, such as there is like a very prominent, important uh, scene which focuses in on like a, a severed hand and you do see like the bloody sinew that's sort of hanging down from the hand and in another scene you see some sort of wild feral dogs that are chewing on like some dismembered you know body parts after you know after a bloody conflict and and there is um, at least an allusion to implication that uh, one of these characters is eating some food which is said to be flavored by human blood and a kind of the implication that isn't necessarily stated but can be implied is that I you know there is also you know cannibalism that is taking place. And one other scene that, that definitely is unsettling is there is a very like almost nightmarish uh, scene where that is filled with a room of like dead and dying people and there is like several very close up uh, shots of like you know maggots that are in the the various wounds and like decaying flesh. As far as sexuality, there's a little bit here, uh, although not necessarily a whole lot. Uh, there is a character that is shown painting kind of in like a classical uh, style and the painting does feature several um, nude women at least like from the chest up also there's one of the villains in this kind of keeps like a harem of wives who it seems very clear are there for the sole purpose of sex and producing him uh, children and they do wear somewhat like tattered garments that are somewhat skin revealing although nothing you know overly gratuitous in that way. And maybe the most disturbing, at least implied, uh, as far as sexuality goes, is there is a very large uh, grown man who is clearly like, sexually interested in Furiosa while she's a very young girl, although she does escape from his you know, influence before he can act on any of those sort of perverted desires. As far as things going on beneath the surface, kind of some themes in this. Like I said, there's almost a surprisingly amount of like biblical themes and imagery really all throughout uh, this movie. And in many ways, the whole film almost acts as like an extended metaphor to just sort of human origins as described in the biblical book of Genesis and how humans are expelled from, you know, the garden paradise of Eden into a very hostile and like violent world of sin and just sort of our pilgrimage to try and, you know, return home from where we came from. Because the movie begins with a very like unmistakable imagery of Furiosa like plucking fruit uh, from a tr tree, which is her last action before she's kidnapped and taken away from her kind of her oasis home, which is called the green place or uh, the place, you know, of abundance. And very much pa paralleling, you know, Adam and Eve's journey of, you know, taking the fruit and then being forced out of, you know, the garden paradise of Eden into sort of the hostile, broken world of, you know, sinful humanity. Because for the rest of the movie, she is sort of driven forward uh, by the memory of her mother who comes to represent sort of, you know, that idyllic former life that she uh, 
yearns to return to. And kind of along the way, again, there's a lot of different biblical um, images. Like there's a, a crucifixion scene, uh, which becomes very important. And her mother gives her like a, you know, a seed from their paradise and, you know, tells her to, to follow the stars to uh, return home. And obviously as Christians, we can think of other uh, individuals through history who follow the stars, you know, try and return back and kind of find the hope fulfilled that they were, you know, longing for. And in many ways, like the wasteland in this movie just becomes a, like an exaggerated uh, kind of metaphor for just our world, our sinful, broken uh, world post, you know, the fall in Eden. Because it is a godless place. It's a place where like, worship of machines and like material things does seem to have been replaced by belief in God. And you see like some almost like religious rituals of people aimed towards like created things like cars and, and uh, wheels. And even Dementis, who is uh, the villain played by uh, Chris Hemsworth, at one point gleefully exclaims that his gang will dance to Darwin. And it very much is sort of this ugly Darwinian world where really only like power and survival matter. And Furiosa, it's a prequel, so her like character journey is not told in full in this movie. Although I do think as a prequel, like thematically, there is a satisfying kind of end to some of that conflict, which I won't spoil um, in this review, but just sort of of that tension between sort of, you know, being lost in this very material Darwinian, ugly kind of fallen world and kind of competing with these these memories and kind of th these yearnings to return back to kind of this paradise that she has lost. So in the end, I don't know how much I holistically enjoyed this movie. I definitely enjoyed uh, parts of it. Um, I think this is a movie that is somewhat more uh, demanding than a lot of other just sort of, you know, summer uh, blockbuster movies. I think it's a movie that not all Christian viewers are going to enjoy or desire to see. I think with like a, a very lengthy two and a half hour runtime and the R rating, it can be challenging at times, both in regards to like, you know, some of the content and also the... Uh, the tone. I think a lot of like the world building is almost like intentionally unsettling, which might keep some viewers uh, away. But I do think for people that do take a trip to the wasteland, there is plenty of like just technical excellence and filmmaking uh, to enjoy. But I think more than that, there are also just a lot of intriguing biblical themes that I think can be discovered amidst a lot of the, you know, the violent spectacle. Because the wasteland in the Mad Max universe is a very godless mechanical world where sinful human nature flourishes without any hope. And I think Furiosa as a the movie does expose that type of world for the real like hellish existence that it truly is but hey if you see this movie would love to hear what you think don't be shy jump into the comment section uh let me know what you thought of the movie what you, th you know the, the visuals or maybe even some of the themes i would love to hear from you and if you haven't done so too I encourage you guys subscribe to the channel become a collider lots of movie reviews a podcast interviews just other fun stuff would love to have you be a part of it but most of all guys thank you for watching stay safe and continue to collide with the world for christ